Do you find that your content doesn't hit home with your ideal buyer? You notice you're not getting the traffic that you think that you should. Your bounce rate is crazy high and you aren't getting the leads that you deserve. This might be because you haven't actually identified who your ideal buyer is. Sure, you have buyers, you have customers, but do you know who your best customer is? In today's episode, Kirk Enright talks about his career in TV production and how it made him realize that knowing your audience is the most important piece of the pie when figuring out what content to create. And that's why he created Power Personas. Power Personas makes it easy to research your persona and use that fully formed, full picture of your ideal client to create better content and know exactly what messaging to use for that client. Kirk and I talked about how to use these personas to create content your audience actually cares about. So stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Tiny Marketing. I'm Sarah Noel Block and I teach small marketing departments that are tired of feeling overwhelmed and under-resourced how to build and manage effective and efficient marketing strategies that work for them. Get ready, it's time to dig in and get a big impact with your tiny team. Thank you so much for joining me today. Can you tell everybody first how we met? Yeah, we met via LinkedIn. Uh, I'd seen some things that you posted and some comments and some articles. And I reached out because it seemed like you might have some interest in buyer personas and obviously content marketing. I will say this and Mm -hmm. uh, unsolicited praise, but I do get your emails, which are awesome. Oh, thank you. I mean, they're really, really well written and that's that's not always the case. Well, that means a lot. That's one of my favorite things to do is write write those newsletters. Um, So can you introduce yourself to the audience? Everybody knows about your awesome new adventure. In personas. Uh, sure. Well, I'm Kirk Enright. So I'm the founder and CEO of Power Personas, which is an AI-driven tool to help you build personas. So buyer personas and ideal customer profiles. The journey for this particular startup started about three years ago, although I've been using personas professionally for probably my entire career, either being presented uh, with them or doing the research to generate them or some combination of those things. And one of the things that struck me was there weren't a whole lot of really good automated tools to kind of help you make the leap from once you've done your research, you've got some good understanding of your customers to, okay, who are these people and how do I engage with them? So that's what the journey was all about. You're right there. I have, within like creating content strategies and I'll create buyer personas and customer avatars and you could do all the research in the world, but it does take us some extra finesse to actually convert this information that you've learned into a persona. So that's a really, it's an interesting take. And I know you worked in TV before Mm -hmm. you started this. So were you using avatars or customer personas in that? Yes. So, uh, and also, I mean, I, I started in advertising and I transitioned into television and television marketing and long form and short form stuff. But yeah, doing uh, promos and trailers in particular usually come up with different sorts of cells, which are aimed at different different types of consumers. There's a really funny video mm-hmm. where someone has taken the movie The Shining, cut it as if it's uh, targeting, uh, you know, the rom com crowd. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, which is kind of anything what that movie is about. You know, usually when you're doing that sort of thing, you you really do try and target the end user, but it kind of gets you thinking about the different people that you're trying to reach and the different ways that you reach them. You know, sometimes it's, you know, kind of the music cues or the information that you're providing. Sometimes it's kind of how you package it up, you know, in terms of content you know, different people will respond to a white paper versus, you know, like a cartoon. Yeah. And so keeping that in mind when you're creating content is pretty important. Yeah. You're right there where I talk a lot about repurposing your content so you can reach different types of audiences. And you're right that not everybody is going to be attracted to a cartoon. Not everybody is going to be attracted to a white paper. I personally (laughs) hate white papers. So repurposing them into different types to meet those customer avatars is really important. But you talked about music cues, which brings me into my music question. So what is your happy song? I'll go with Pete Townsend's Let My Love Open the Door. Okay. 
So the Who was a you know when I was growing up that was the band that I liked. So that's the first thing that that came to mind. Yeah. Um, tell me, is there a background? Is there a reason that that's your happy song? Well, besides the fact that it's the one that I can think of because I have a lot of lists. <laughs> um, and a lot of stuff on there I pulled from, I used to listen to, uh, KCRW used to, uh, station in Southern California has a great morning show and they used to do podcasts where they release a song a day. So I used to pull those in and add those to playlists, but I would never remember the names of the artists or the, the song titles. So, well, yeah, I actually, I remember doing something similar to that, like waiting, waiting at the, on the radio. <laughs> ready to record my my song <laughs> and then invariably you get a dj who would talk yeah over and you're like intro. okay i've been waiting here for six right. hours for this song and now you just talked over the intro ridiculous right. okay so let's get back to personas why should content marketers use personas when they're developing their content how does it benefit them I think the primary benefit of, of buyer personas is focus alignment and direction. So they get everyone on the same page, talking about the same things, moving in the same direction. And if you think about not only the number of different types of content that you can create and how, you know, kind of vast and varied that is, but also the different departments that use it, um, making sure that everyone is, speaking with the same voice is, I think, critically important. That doesn't mean the exact same execution. I mean, everyone has different sort of uh, tools and tactics that they use, but you sometimes find or get in situations where uh, somebody responds really favorably to one piece of content that seems to say something that's if not contradictory to another piece of content, it doesn't really sync up very mm -hmm. well. And so I think that that can create some buyer confusion and especially given the fact that we're putting all this stuff out there and letting people kind of consume it at their own will, that's more important than ever. Yeah, I really liked your point about the alignment between different departments. Mm -hmm. This is especially important with sales and marketing. We work hand in hand, but sometimes it feels like we're in different planets. And right. having that customer avatar that you both agree on makes it a lot easier to be able to create that content that sales can get behind and can use. You know, from my perspective, personas are also a mm -hmm. great filter. So as a consultant, I've done lots of different types of buyer personas for lots of different types of companies and clients. And sometimes you use them to create specific uh, pieces of content, but sometimes you also make sure that you, you're kind of covering all your bases. And so that when you're trying to target someone in particular, you're not leaving anybody out. Mm -hmm. I guess it's not just a way to help you kind of hone in or develop specific kinds of content. It's also a way to make sure that you're doing what you need to be doing. So by leaving anybody out, are you talking about like the sales journey where you might leave out someone who might influence the buying decision, but they're not the decision maker? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And I think that that's often you don't think about the people who are in the room and need to raise their hand and say yes to this product or this service. Right. If it isn't the person who's signing the contract, but if they're equally important because you're not going to get to that point with their, their buy in. Absolutely. So, what should every persona include? Well, in a minimum, you're usually talking about some demographic and psychographic information. So, uh, you know, age, income, sometimes where they live, what they do, and what sorts of traits or tendencies or characteristics that they exhibit. And most of that is just so that you have an idea of who this person is, especially when you're using those to give sort of marching orders to your team. Not everyone's as good at sort of picturing people in their mind as everyone else. So some of those details kind of help help content creators kind of cue in on, oh, so that's a person who likes this sort of thing. And then, I mean, with our tool and certainly some other ways, you can get more specific and say, based on the sort of psychological characteristics of this type of person, what sorts of messaging or themes or structures are they most likely to respond to? Now, you sent me the basic process of creating a persona analyze, organize, define. Can you walk me through that? Sure. So um, we're actually putting together a, a full-on uh, buyer persona guide, which is similar to that, but a little more expansive, particularly, I mean, mostly what you'd want to do is start with some kind of research on your customer base. Who are they? Gather as much of that as you can. Now, sometimes that's 
formal studies, and then sometimes that's informal um, working groups. Once you've kind of mapped all that out, then you begin to analyze that and look for uh, patterns and connections among different types of, of customers. And so you're sort of developing these composites, that then you can kind of get your head around. I mean, we as humans can't keep an infinite number of things or people in our heads at any given time. So the composites are sort of a tool to help you focus on this type of person and this type of person instead of having to think of, you know, 100 or 300 or 1,000 different people. Once you've done that, you're kind of pulling together things that they have in common and that define sort of that composite. And then also what makes that particular persona different than the other ones. Okay. 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 So you can compile all of the information that you've gathered during this research phase and tell me how your software makes it into, turns it in from yes. of data into an actual persona. There are lots of different ways that you can describe somebody. So some of those are demographics and some of those are psychographics. So characteristics or traits or tendencies that somebody might have. So you might dis- define someone as adventurous or uh, reserved or outgoing, or you might call someone bookish or, you know, a thrill seeker or any of those kind of qualities that you've sort of stitched together as the pattern that represents that person. We take those and say, okay, based on that, we are running a bunch of calculations and classifications in the background to say the person you've described is likely to exhibit these sorts of other tendencies or characteristics. So if you're describing someone that's adventurous, then personality science and behavioral economics would suggest that there are ways that that person is likely to behave. And as a marketer, you can cue into some of those things to write more engaging content or the content that resonates more deeply with them. Okay. That actually was not planned, but it leads right into my next question. All right. Um, How can personas help content marketers create better content that'll resonate better? Well, if you sort of go back through, you know, a few decades of of doing this, one of the things that I've seen is people creating content without thinking about who it's being consumed by. Mm -hmm. And once you begin to think, who's my target, you're sort of automatically limiting some of the decisions that you might make in terms of what you're going to do. The other part is that certain types of people will tend to gravitate toward certain sort of universal themes. And ideally, you can align those to whatever product or service you're selling so that you've got something that kind of cues into those sort of uh, deep needs and wants and motivations and drives that people have. Yeah. And then there's also a whole separate thing about the way that people tend to think and the way that they like to be have information presented so that by getting a better sense of who you're going after, you're serving up the right information in the right way at the right time. Yeah. I was just having a call with someone about content themes and that's exactly what we were talking about is like a content theme is your product and service. <laughs> The problems that your ideal customer have and then how those merge and like that Venn diagram, that middle is where it's at. And you can't completely define what that problem is and what could happen if they don't get that problem solved unless you have that customer avatar set up, unless you actually know who they are and who you're talking to. Right. Well, and I I would even go so far, and we talked about how to create personas, but I think that once you've gathered all your customer information together, one of the recommendations, particularly in the B2B space, I think, is come up with some sort of organizing framework. So it may be pain points, it may be triggers, it may be use cases, but then you're kind of layering that over your customer base, and then you're beginning to look for patterns within those sort of groups. So that if I have three different use cases, then I'm kind of moving some of my customers into those different buckets. Mm -hmm. And then I'm saying, okay, so what do all these customers have in common versus these customers? And then how can I kind of pull all that information out and then use those? And that is much easier than to execute content against because, you know, you've got your pain points people or your use cases or your triggers or some, something that's related to your core value problem. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point that like these customer avatars, they could still fall into that same bucket where that content would resonate with multiple avatars. 
So how can people work with you and your product? Go to the website and sign up and give it a try and see if you like it. And if you like it, hopefully you'll, you know, keep using it. And if you don't, that's okay too. It's probably not for everybody in the sense that you kind of have to buy into really strongly the idea that buyer personas are the jumping off point for strategic planning and any kind of content uh, discussions that you're going to have. And that you want to make sure that you have sort of cross-functional alignment in all your departments. Yeah. And and where can people find you online? At powerpersonas.com. Okay. And do you hang out anywhere particular online? LinkedIn? I'm usually on LinkedIn. I believe that there's some contact information on the website. And at some point there will be one of those little bots that says, do you want to chat? And of course, if anyone's interested in doing that and has some, you know, challenges or something, you know, I'm usually available to kind of provide some guidance or some overthought as to what they're doing. Excellent. All right. So in the show notes and the description, we'll have the link to Power Personas and all of his social media profiles. So you can follow him there and check out the website and start building your personas that way. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And we'll also should have have our uh, guide available. Awesome. As well. Let's uh, plan it out. So the guide is available before we publish it. From our little chitty chat chat, you should have learned three things. One, the benefits of using personas to align your messaging with your ideal customer. Two, the process of creating those personas. And three, how to use this information to create content your audience cares about. Thank you for listening today. Don't forget to follow so you get notified when a new episode comes out. And we'll see you next time. Hello, and thank you for joining Tiny Marketing. I help tiny marketing departments create consistent content that builds trust with their audience. Book done-for-you content marketing at sarahnoelblock.com. Don't forget to follow, rate, and review the podcast on your favorite podcast app. See you next time, friends.